Um, I'm also the community development manager for Bunker Labs. Thank you to all the veterans that are here today, including Dean and Preston. Thank you. I know there are a few more as well. Um, I'd like to introduce John Rennie. John and I actually met two weeks ago. Uh, he was part of the WRIL event in Wilson, North Carolina. He was one of the presenters. He is a veteran of the Navy and um, an executive with ABB and is now the CEO of Peak Demand. Please welcome John. Good morning. How's everybody doing? All right. How many of you heard, how many of you have heard of Peak Demand? Raise your hand before this time. Oh, one. That's good. How many how many have heard of Wilson, North Carolina? All right, there you go. That's where we're located. I'll talk to you a little bit about our company and what we do. Um, we do not do goat yoga. So unfortunately, Brian, I can't talk to you there. So well done uh, with the first presentation. Uh, we, um, our company is uh, unique um, in that um, we are helping utilities. Um, if you know electric utilities, there's 3,500 electric utilities around the country with one mission, and that's to keep the lights on, right? We cannot tolerate having no electricity, whether it's a hospital, schools, what have you, we need power to get things done. Without power, there's no internet. Without power, there's nothing, nothing happens. So utilities have a primary mission, keep the lights on. So I've been in this industry uh, my whole life. My father was one of these guys up in the bucket truck. He was a lineman. Uh, so uh, I grew up in the industry. Uh, as uh, Jim mentioned, I was in the Navy for a little while, I got out, and I've worked in this industry supplying products, uh, working for big companies for the past 23 years. Um, and we know that the primary mission is for these guys to keep the lights on. The problem is, though, it's very difficult to get parts and, and to keep the parts coming in for these utilities. One of the things that they run into is they're very long lead times for a lot of these items that they, they produce. It's not, it's not unusual to have six, eight, 12 weeks to get some of the parts, critical parts they need to be able to keep the grid up and running. The other thing is, is a lot of the companies that are supplying these industries are big and they're like, they focus heavily on big projects and big opportunities. And so a lot of the opportunities for the smaller products, the things that need to come quickly, kind of gets uh, put on by the way, uh, you know, gone by the wayside. They, they, they fall through the cracks. And the other item we noticed, you know, having worked for the larger companies in the industry, is that customer support is somewhat sketchy. Right. Um, if something goes wrong, sometimes there's an argument between, well, how did you use it? How did you apply it versus a kind of a get it done, get it replaced, get the get the guy back up and running. So we've noticed as we work for those of us that are part of this peak demand company. Now we, we observed this over the years and we said, you know what, there's a better way we can do this differently. So this industry really needs a different kind of supplier. Um, Think of it as um, we were talking about Airbnb for uh, for outdoor usage. Think of this as Amazon for utility. So a B two B business that can get you your products quickly uh, and, and and easy and hassle free. So we formed Peak Demand. Uh, we actually formed last year in March of 2016, and for about a year we actually operated out of a business development center in Wilson, North Carolina, where we actually designed our products, we tested our products, we, we built the website, we basically built this thing from the ground up and determined exactly the type of products we wanted to have and we kind of started, we, and we started rolling that out into, into, the, uh, in, into our customer base basically, which are 3,500 utilities across the country. And in March of uh, this year, we opened our factory and we have a factory in Wilson now, 50,000 square foot factory where we're doing some of our manufacturing there. We also do some manufacturing in China as well. We have a partner in China that uh, someone I've known for a long time, we were able to partner with him. And so we have, a, we have exclusive use of all of his production over in China. So with those items we, we need to make over there because customers need to have the right price point, we can make them in China. So we opened in March. Um, and we, uh, again, trying to make things Amazon easy for our customers, we ship got about 15,000 items in stock. We make the stock versus most of the industry make to order. So when they get an order, they start the production process. We, 
we make to stock. So we, having all of us experienced in the industry, we kind of know what utilities want, how they want it, and we build those ahead of time, test them, we put them in stock so we can ship them quickly. So our aspiration was 90% of our orders ship in 24 hours. What we've been able to do is, is about 99% right now. So sometimes we run into a special item that we don't have or we have to modify for a customer. But in general, we're working on a model where we ship within 24 hours. Um, we also have an online system where once you're a customer of ours, you can go in and you can see what, what's our, how much inventory do we have. You can place reorders. You can see the status of yours. You can try, get your shipping numbers, tracking numbers. You might think that that's a, you know, simple, and you might think that why isn't someone else doing it, but no one else is doing it today. So today, uh, the number one way that you get a purchase order in this industry is with a fax. And our goal in the beginning was not to have a fax machine until our largest customer <laughs> said, what's your fax number? And uh, we had to get a fax. So, uh, But we wanted to try to get everything on our online system where you place reorgs and what have you online and not have to use a fax machine. But we're, we're trying to change the industry that way. So um, the other thing is we offer free trials for our products is we want people to test our products, kick the tires, make sure they're happy with it. And then we're pretty much hassle free. When there's a problem with the product, we just take it back. We send them replacements, no questions asked. And so we're there and we're, we back up our products and we make sure that the customer is completely satisfied at all times. So a little bit different than what, uh, what people are doing in the industry today. Um, I won't bore you with all the products, but a number of different products are used in both distribution and transmission of electricity. Some of our items go directly to utilities. Others, uh, some of the large OEMs uh, will actually use our products in their products for utilities. But ultimately, utilities are the, the final user of our product. So, you know, how have we got the word out? We're a small company. Um, we have 11 employees today. Um, and uh, how do we get the word out? I'm competing against very large, in the billions uh, companies with very large marketing uh, budgets. What they spend in one trade show is what I'll probably spend in marketing for 10 years, right? I mean, uh, they have very large resources. So we've had to do a little guerrilla marketing, right, to get, our, get the word out. So we have, um, you know, we've done things like social media, I'm pretty active on there. One of the things we've, we've really been successful at is kind of getting uh, hooked up with linemen. The linemen community is very active on Instagram. They're very proud. There are a lot of a lot of them are very outdoors, outdoorsy type of people. They fish, they hunt, and so we've kind of hooked up with them. We've done a couple promotions within Instagram, and Instagram's actually been it's the one thing I didn't want didn't want to do in social media. And it turns out that's actually one of the better ones that we've had in terms of people interacting with us and learning what our brand is. Um, we've also done old fashioned send a postcard. And uh, you know, there's 3,500 uh, utilities, and we, we, we basically have mailing lists of all the people, the key decision makers in those utilities. We send them a postcard. And what's interesting is we just watch our website, and we can actually see across the country where people have picking up the postcard and then gone to our website. And then we've gotten orders from it as well, too. So people get to know us. They go to the website. They kind of explore a little bit. Next thing you know, we got an order. So it's, it's kind of neat. So we've done some old-fashioned stuff. We've also done, you know, typical what you'd see in, in terms terms of email campaigns and what have you, but I think the postcard mailing has actually been pretty effective. We do have uh, uh, manufacturers reps across the country, so they're calling directly on these utilities for us on our behalf. Um, we're still signing up some. We have in some areas of the country that we don't, we don't have covered, but we've got 39 states covered right now. And we've been hitting trade shows, and one of the areas we found that's effective is we can't spend the money that the other guys can as far as having a big booth. They'll, they'll take up the size of this room with their booth. We've done some 10 by 10 booths, but one of the areas we found most effective in our trade shows is going to teach and going to uh, demonstrate what we can do or what, what uh, or some technical fact about our products that are helpful for customers. So we found that to be more effective with getting people to engage with us and learn about our brand. So not just setting up a, a booth, but actually teaching and training. Uh, so our order growth, we set up the factory, as mentioned, in March, and we uh, crossed a million in sales uh, in six months, which was exciting. Um, and right now, we're probably, when November's finished, we'll be about at 1.5 million in our first, basically, off, off the, getting out of the blocks. So 
it's a good start. Uh, we want we want to grow much bigger than that, but um, it is a good a good start for us to get the word out, and people are trusting us um, with uh, with with our sales or with our company. So um, I mentioned we're founded by veterans. All of us have been. It should be industry veterans, although I am a military veteran, but uh, founded by uh, uh, industry veterans, guys that have been in the business a long time and guys that were frustrated with what we could do in big companies. We wanted to be able to do it on our own, do it better. And so all of us have experience in this industry, and it makes it helpful as we've gone to trying to make decisions on products and pricing and uh, go-to-market strategy. It's been helpful. So some of our challenges. How do we get people to change in a very conservative industry? Like, as I mentioned, utilities mission is to keep the lights on. Change means something might go wrong. So how do we get, how do we get them to, to try us? Because once they try us, we found that they like us and they continue to buy from us. But how do we get them to try? Competing with the big dogs, I mentioned that. We don't have the budget they have, so how do we, how do we get the influence that they have? Um, building a company from the ground up is one of the other challenges. We didn't have anything. We didn't have any procedures. We didn't, we had an empty shell of a building. Uh, we had no website. So all this stuff had to be developed from the ground up. We had no products. We had to develop, design our products. We had to put in the infrastructure. So that's been a lot of work. Uh, it took us a year from the time we started to we went really kind of full blown into the marketplace. So it was about a year of working on this before we kind of went live. And then cash to grow. As we grow, as you, well, no, this is going to take inventory. It's going to take equipment. We're going to need to continue to need cash as we as we uh, grow the business and, and uh, get it to the size we want it to be. So cash is always a, a challenge with a startup, as, as you all know, in this room. So um, those are our challenges, and um, that's it. So that's, that's my contact information, and I'll just open up for questions. I'm into the utility. I've been developing solar. I have solar farms around here. Oh, sorry. I have solar farms here in North Carolina. Oh, uh, going nice. to, with my business partners. But the issue we've faced, you know, with your, I mean, I like your product and all that stuff with the utility company. But the issue with these big dogs, you know, we figure out some of the companies where we can buy some solar plate and some of the stuff, you know what I'm saying, for replacement. The issue with these big dogs and the utility commissioners. They've protected that industry that the small people like you, it's very difficult, you know, to get an approval and all that stuff. My suggestion for you is to maybe have a meeting, you know, in North Carolina, I think we have about the co-ops, utility yeah. co-ops, yes. and maybe sit down with them because, you know, they've protected that industry that the big utility company, it's very hard for people like you to credit in. Even though we've tried to, to buy some of your stuff, we have to go through... Uh, the commissioner to go list by list, and they have their own people whom they've protected. That how do you, what's your challenge in that? Because we've had issues. We've had some companies where we want to buy some solar plates for our solar farms, and they tell us no, you cannot. This is the only company you can go. If you've gone through that, uh, we have yeah, and, and as you mentioned, co-ops and, and municipal utilities have been much more. Uh, it's been a lot easier to get those than the big than the big utilities. Absolutely. No, but most of our products, when we buy most of our products, we have to make sure with the utility commission, you know, yes. that they, they've been approvals. And most of them are big, uh, yep. big companies. That's the first time, you know, we get so many so, issues with that. A good story. We're doing it in New York City right now. We've met with the utility commission, and we're approved now as a vendor for uh, for Con, uh, Con Ed. And so, once we go through a couple more testing tests, we'll actually be supplying in New York City. So if we can do that, I figure we can do that around the country. So uh, well my suggestion, my other thing I'll tell you, you might want to uh, do PJMs too. PJM is much more related. We had about PH PJM then. Okay. Yeah, I don't know that. So uh, I'll tell you more about okay. it. But uh, places like New Jersey and New York, it's okay. much easier to go and uh, it's much easier and all that stuff. In Maryland now it's since there's a new government and I'm saying but right. uh, issues with feist around here in the south is so protected by these big utility companies mm -hmm. that you know there's so many stamp fields. You focus places like New York and New Jersey and uh, and Maryland mm -hmm. and Pennsylvania, that would be the best for you. Well, no, thank you. Thank you. So I have two questions. Number one is um, I, I do some work with a company. They, they have automatic replenishment sorts of things where you can kind of anticipate your orders throughout the year. Have you thought about anything like that to 
to, to also change the culture because most of these companies are probably planning projects out into the future. Maybe you can get involved in that. And the other question is, as you grow, do you anticipate putting distribution centers in different parts of the country so you're not as reliant on a longer uh, you know, transportation chain? Yeah, good question. Um, no, as far as the software is concerned, maybe we can talk afterwards, but that's something we want to be able to, to be better at anticipating the needs of, of customers ahead of time. That's part of our business model, so that is important to us. As far as distribution centers, we do work with distributors in the industry, so they'll actually stock our products around the country, but we, we've actually talked about the idea of opening a West Coast uh, warehouse where we can store some of our products because that's really the big thing. We chose East Coast because 60% of the electricity is used on this side of the of this side of the Mississippi. However, California's a long way ways away, and there's a lot of electricity used on the West Coast as well. So we, we're, we're, we're in fact, if you look at our customers right now, we have like a push, push pin map, and we've really grown out of North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida. So we're growing from this area. It's mostly because we have the resources here. So we do need to get on the West Coast. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, nice presentation. You know, a couple of points you brought up there with, with Gillian and Wilson and everything too. Did you work a lot with the economic development there, based on job creation to build out that building? Yeah, they, they've been great. The the Wilson Economic Development Council helped us find the building that we're in. Had to be renovated. It was an old tobacco processing plant. We gutted it and put our factory in there. So they've been great. Yeah, yeah. Wilson's been phenomenal for us. Yeah. So. The other thing I just suggest to you, I know you're probably working with electric cities in the state here with immunities, and that's the best way to go because they're not regulated by the commission. But if you approach the American Public Power Association, the national chain, we are. We're members. Think, yeah. Okay. We're members. All right. That's just the two things. Yeah. Other than that, just some training in your backyard and bring people down there. It's great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great presentation. It's a really great story. Uh, one question that came up showing your, your growth so far. Are you profitable yet? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, also, you mentioned your competition being big dogs. Yeah. Do you see as part of your future being acquired? <clears throat> Say that one more time. Do you see as part of your future being acquired? Uh, no, that's not our goal. We want to be the next great brand in the industry, so we do not have the desire to be acquired. So it's funny because I listen to a lot of podcasts and I hear about these companies that their mission is to build up big enough, annoy the big guys, and then the big guys buy you. We 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 are we are annoying the big guys, but I don't want to get bought by them. So so we we, we don't. We just want to be the. We we love what we do, um, and we want to be around for a long time. So I'm I'm 50. I'm a young startup guy too. So uh, Brian was 53. So I'm a young guy. I'm like 50 doing this, but uh, I want to do this till I retire. Um, and uh, I've got a great team, and I'm having a lot of fun. So. Hi, John. Good morning. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your margin, like? Uh, State side versus your your outsourcing to China. Just curious if you could talk about that. So um, the biggest thing is labor costs. We can get a lot cheaper on labor with respect to making it in China versus making it in the U.S. So uh, we do have to be there for some of our products. Um, so uh, so a lot of a lot of um, a lot of products in the utility space have become almost commoditized. So you have to be at a price point that to be uh, to be attractive to them. And a lot of the other guys have outsourced, so so we've had to go there. So the biggest issue is labor. Where we can get away from that is when we automate production. So if we automate our production, we take labor out. We don't have the cost problems that that you would normally have with a high labor product. So um, as far as margins are concerned, it, it depends. Some of our products we can make both in China and in the U.S. We do make more money when we make it in China. So because of the cost. Um, I would gather that uh, as you're going through quick growth, uh, accounts receivable is a bigger and bigger yeah. problem. Are you, are you doing any innovative things to uh, make it easy for your customers to pay you faster and managing your accounts receivable and collections? And no. I wish we were. We're calling, we're sending emails, we're reminding. So far we've been fairly lucky. I mean, everybody's been paying their bills, but. But yeah, if you have some ideas of being more innovative in, in collecting cash, I'm open to it. So we don't have a lot of money though over startup, but <laughs> we've got some ideas. Yeah. Well, I I think that, uh, and, and I don't know enough about you know uh, dealing with these folks as to what you can and can't do, but looking for some type of electronic solution. So 
that, um, you know, boom, you can just uh, get automatically paid as you go with them, that type of thing, or, or setting up some sort of prepayment incentive, uh, mm -hmm. that type of thing for them would uh, be things that you want to look at down the road. No, that sounds good. That sounds good. We can't be spending a lot of our time chasing cash, right? So my question was around, um, you know, you talk about a lot of these big players in the market, you know, what's stopping them from you know, essentially doing what you're doing? Are you guys investing in IP and the products? Is, you know, what's, what's, what's differentiating you there? So as, as I mentioned, our, 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 our entry in the market is being fast, being easy, being quick, right? Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, as we've been developing our product, we've been developing little features here and there that the other guys don't have, and we've been protecting that with patents. So, so the main thrust of us have been being quick and simple and easy, but once they get to know our products, they say, wait a second, you have this feature. I'm like, yeah, that's something that we add to that. We don't add any more money for that. You can get this extra benefit, this extra feature. So uh, most of us are engineers in the company, and so we have, we have patented a, a number of new items in these products as well. But that's not what our main thrust is to the to the marketplace we want them to come to us because we're easy and stay with us because we're different and we've got some features they like so right so if you guys are developing products do you guys do you guys see yourself just white labeling those products versus you know having to sell it yourself no we everything's up with our with our label so we're making it uh, our designs our factories our label so we're not white labeling anything today would we be open for that depending so say there was somebody that has you know, uh, a, a, a number of products on this space and they need, need an extra one. Yeah, we're open to that. We've talked to a few people, but today we, everything's our label today. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, great presentation uh, and congratulations for starting your manufacturing in the U.S. I'm a big proponent <laughs> of more manufacturing here, so hats off to you. Uh, regarding the products that you're saying you're developing, uh, could you just tease us a little bit on some of the features and benefits of what you've added to your product? Sure. I mean, one of the uh, one of the products that's not in the market today is a fuse cutout, which you probably have never seen one, but you have seen one. They're just about on every power pole that you see out there. They look like they're the three of them on, a, on an angle. They've got gray porcelain insulators and they've got a fuse on them. So one of the things we offer, and it's, it, it's a no extra charge to our customer, when that fuse blows, the fuse actually opens up. And so the utility lineman has got to try to find that. So he drives around in a truck looking for that downed device. So some people offer a, like an LED flashing light, but it costs about 50 bucks for that. We offer it as part of our standard cutout. It actually, when the fuse blows, it opens up a sleeve and it's got a reflective light on it. So as they shine their light up, they see that they have a blown fuse. Simple, easy, and it was designed by a lineman, and that's the kind of stuff that we have in our product. There's a number of other things like that, too, but that's an example. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much. Great job. Yeah. I have one more question. Okay. I'm in futility. Let me ask you a question. Have you seen uh, uh, this? Uh, uh, we have actually, you can log in where it tells you where the power is off and, you know, the lines, mm -hmm. and it tells you exactly what you need, like, you know, whatever the company is, and it tells you what product have you, have you hooked up to that software? No, I'm not familiar with that. Okay, I'll link you with that. You can tell okay. you exactly what, what they need and you know how long to fix that and all that stuff, and maybe get in touch with some of the liners, probably will be looking for, for the okay. companies and all that That'd stuff. That'd be helpful, thank you. Yes, I'll link you with thank that. Thank you. Real quick one. Um, uh, as I'm sitting here thinking, have you ever considered trying to con connect with somebody with the most recent storms that occurred, like in Puerto Rico, where you can they could utilize your materials, just basically rebuild? Do you have any connections there? No, but if you have a connection, we'd like it. I, I have literally been, we, we have called, emailed, sent, uh, no, we've tried everything we can to help Puerto Rico. We, we literally took pictures of our of our inventory and send it to the key people in Puerto Rico at PREPA is the big utility down there. I don't know what's going on down there, but uh, it's a little bit of a mess. Uh, and, and you probably heard about whitefish and all that. So, but we really can't get too much of an audience down there. But if anyone can connect us to Puerto Rico, we are here to help. 
you have to send someone there. That's the only. Yeah. Just reason. locally, what you want to do is take a look at Power Secure out of Wake Forest. We know. Yeah, we've met. We deal with Sydney. Those guys, yeah. they're doing a lot of work. Good. Here. Good. So okay. yeah. Hey, um, I have a question about cash flow. You have a lot of SKUs in inventory, and how are you dealing with cash flow? Well, this, there's a little trick there. So my partner uh, over in China has given me very, very good cash terms, and that's that's a little bit of how we're doing it. So we have uh, we're allowed we, we we can carry a lot of stock without having to pay a lot of cash for it right now. So part part of that is that plus plus we have we we have set up cash for building inventory. So it is a bit of our our model is to be able to have it in stock and ship it in stock uh, or have it in stock and be able to ship it quickly. So it is part of the cash that we've. Part of our business plan was to have that uh, inventory on hand. But yes, we do have favorable cash terms with our overseas suppliers. That does help. But it is a big challenge. Yeah. One last question. From the previous presenter. <laughs> Before I was an outdoor adventurist, I was in the uh, lean manufacturing supply chain uh, business with uh, uh, essentially an electronic Kanban on-demand signaling system. Have you heard of Power Partners down in Athens, uh, Alabama, uh, Athens, Georgia? Sure. They were former ABB guys that yeah. uh, basically took over that plant and uh, ran it. Yeah, <coughs> friends with in terms of them. building from the ground up, I think there's a lot of really good lessons in their journey there that I would encourage you to reach out to. They're also very uh, approachable, wonderful people. They're good people. Um, yeah. But I also, in that vein, too, have you um, thought about the, the challenges of this kind of, you know, disaster-driven replenishment challenge that manufacturers like them, which have you know, large transformers, um, some of the specialization or kind of uh, a customer service advantage or maybe even a software, if you're meeting 99% in 24-hour shipping, that's uh, that's incredible you know, to start out like that. So you obviously know what you're doing, and uh, congratulations on that. But there may be partnerships with other manufacturers in sort of a distribution alliance kind of thing or a network. I, I think you're right on to something. We, we've got to get better at this. We we fully expected with the three storms that hit, really two storms, and then the Puerto Rico act, after effects, we expect to be a lot more, a lot busier than we were. So we're we, we're not out there enough. We're not connected enough. And storm recovery. One of the things is utilities carry a lot more stock than they used to because of what happened in uh, with uh, Superstorm Sandy, and uh, so they do carry a lot more stock. But still, I'm used to working 24-7 for, for a month after a big storm to get caught up. So we're a little surprised we didn't, we're not connected well enough yet to get into those uh, storm recovery efforts this year at least. So that's really good advice. I appreciate that. All right, John, thank you very much. Thank you. We're going to open it up to announcements, but before we start.